Hi, welcome to International Hawaii on ThinkTech, where we showcase local import and export companies and the trade industry. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and today we're chatting with Mark Miyahara of Creative Kamaaina. They're an import company and FPZ9 tenant. Hey, Hi, Mark. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so can you give us a brief explanation about what your company does and what it is and how you got started? Okay. Um, I'll start with how we got started. So in 1996, I was uh, um, working for a company that uh, was uh, the biggest, the oldest, uh, largest uh, manufacturer of window coverings in the state of wow. Hawaii. And they just went through like the uh, acquisition of their competitor. And they were having a little trouble with the kind of the um, synergizing of the two companies. So mm. I got involved with the company and um, after two and a half years, they, they really couldn't resolve their issues. So they just uh, closed the doors in 30 days. They gave me 30 days and uh, said, oh, we're just closing the doors and we're, not, we're just going to shut down the operation. So huh. uh, I just went to all the employees. Because the they, employees. they couldn't. Yeah, no, they couldn't. It's a, it was really a strange oh. situation. But anyway, yeah, so we, uh, I just got five of the key employees and asked them, you know, if they were willing to uh, embark on, a, a, you know, a new adventure with me and a new starting a new company. And that's how we started Creative Kamaaina. So we specialize <laughs> in um, manufacturing custom draperies primarily. Um, at the time, we were doing, engaging in every ball. All facets of the window covering, um, the aluminum blinds, uh, vertical blinds, shades, all kinds of things. But uh, we kind of whittled it down to narrow our niche market to custom drapery stuff. So that's where we are now. And did you guys, did it come with all the equipment you needed to? Did yeah. You to get rid of a was, bunch of stuff? I mean, it was just a turnkey operation. No, we just were in the same buildings. You know, everything was the same. We, you know, just, we just started paying rent and that was it. <laughs> I worked out for, wow. you know, and I was, it was always a dream of mine to own a manufacturing company because, really? that's of, yeah, that's always, you know, from the time I was in school, I just, that was something that I had to do. And cool. uh, I just, it was being there, like I said, right time, right place. And uh, 21 years later, we're still wow. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you were a, like a business consultant or like a change, well, innovation a, a change kind of person? background, so it's kind of moving around. I just didn't find my my nature, actually my passion of what I really wanted to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Not having anybody tell me what to do, that was my, actually my real <laughs> <goal>. <laughs> I don't know if that was a blessing or not, but it's, uh, it's it's been fun. It's been a good experience. That's the dream. Yeah, and it I is. was. <laughs> I was. I when I first heard about your company, I thought it was so interesting because it's one of those companies where you actually manufacture something that you see everywhere, but you just take it for granted. Like when you go to the hotels, there's drapes. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, but you have to think about there's actually somebody that makes the drapes. Yeah. <laughs> What's more interesting is that they all look alike, but every single room has to be measured. It's to be manufactured to the quarter of an inch. So that's a lot more detailed than it uh, actually, you know, from the, from the lay person is looking at it. Go, oh, that's, yeah, you guys did that? Okay. But, uh, so you no, think each room has, is different? Like, yeah, because, uh, you know, a lot of the buildings, they're not built square. Yeah. So when you look at it on paper, they're all like 120 by 96. But when you walk, walk into the room, it's a little variance of maybe an inch or a quarter of an inch, two inches, you know, so all the heights could be different. And, you know, we're talking about light coming in and privacy issues. So, yeah, there's a lot more work to, that uh, is involved. Yeah. And that's wow, what, what, that is, I can't. Yeah. But that's what keeps us in business. You know, it's the, <laughs> the, little, the customization of products that, uh, you know, as a manufacturer, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we're here. Yeah. That is amazing. Like, yeah. That's a lot of work to go in and measure every room in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so did your customers kind of come over with the company? 
Or did you have yeah, to build up your... You know, the, the company that uh, I was talking about, they were there for like 54 years before we, you know, kind of took over. But so the customer base was there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, you know, even to this day, we, we hardly ever advertise. You know, actually, never. You know, we just, it's just word of mouth and just do a good job. You know, that's kind of our... Our, model, you know, our operational uh, perspective mm -hmm. or marketing perspective. You do a good job, they're going to come in. We've been, we've been lucky. That's great. And so I know you do a lot of hotel chains. Do you do like the whole chain or just like the Hawaii properties? Well, no, just different properties. Some of the chains are aware of who we are. And even within the chain itself, they have their own buying um, Groups and, and method of purchasing departments, so it it, it all varies. Yeah, uh, we'd like to yeah. have one single chain, but then on the other hand, it's kind of scary if once they make a change, then you lost your whole you know, group. Of hotels, <laughs> you know, so it's kind of doing one by one, and you get you know five or six a year. That's that's perfect. That's all we need. We don't need to do every one of them. You know. Yeah. Mm, that's true. That is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then as as um as an importer, how do you find your suppliers? Like, how do you source so, your raw materials? So, on the hospitality side, for the um, as far as the products are concerned, uh, well, most of the hotels they have their own design teams, and they purchase the the products, and they'll just ship mm -hmm. it to their house and we'll manufacture it. Um, small hotels sometimes they give us a, an opportunity to. Um, present a design so we can purchase our, you know, the fabrics. We'll make recommendations to them, get samples for it. And, and then uh, once they make their selection, then we just go to our sources. And, and, and third, it's primarily China. And uh, we get them to okay. make it. And um, when we purchase, we purchase it from their door to our door. So we don't try not to get involved too much with the, uh, the paperwork issue side, because uh, that's uh, all encompassing in itself. You need somebody that highly, um, I guess, uh, up-to-date and current with the standards. So, yeah, we try not to get involved too much with that. We just use brokerages. Yeah. Let mm. them specialty work. Yeah, too much that's important. Work. Yeah, too much. To <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially with the changes in the trade and policy. and. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much detail. Especially with China. Yeah, you know, so... We try not to get involved with it. We have a very good relationship with the, uh, uh, our fabric supplier in China. Um, we consider his family already. So, and that's oh. what you have to build upon. You know, just find somebody that you trust. And um, yeah, that, that's how we worked it out. Yeah. I sent my daughter over there for four months and she worked with them. And so it's, it was a good thing, you know, because you have to build that trust because prior to that, mm -hmm. We went through, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 different suppliers. And wow. you know, the first one was, was okay. And then mm -hmm. you think, you know, your second, your third, and fourth orders. Then you start <laughs> seeing the quality changes. Oh. And it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know <laughs> we went there, you go and you watch, and they send their best seamstress out there and they do it. And wow, that's fantastic. And when they start doing the production, then they need to bring in all these other people and they lose the control of the quality. So, um, so even for us trying to manufacture large quantities over there, it's uh, mm -hmm. we, we try, but it's best to just do it at home where we, we can control all of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So even trying to find a supplier was trial and error. You had to like try out different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm... I'm very, uh, I don't eat a lot of different foods, but having to go to China and <laughs> <laughs> breaking bread with them, different people is like, oh my gosh, but you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> but, uh, it was yeah, worth it. That's... Yeah, met some really nice, good people in there. Oh, so, good. That's what I heard. You have to actually build the, like a face-to-face -face relationship. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, you know, a lot of the, um, the suppliers that we have today, I mean, they, they supply some of the biggest companies, distributors in the United States. And I, you know, wow. when I walk through the factory and go, yeah, can we buy from you direct? And they'll, well, you're the only <laughs> one that eats with us. So, 
<laughs> we'll make a big exception. So oh, that's it's, awesome. just, it's just building relationships. You know, I, I guess that's, uh, I don't know, universal and everything that you think. So, yeah. Interesting. Wow. That's amazing. And so for all the different suppliers that you tried out, you would actually go and visit their factory and meet the yeah. people that work there? Yeah. Yeah, you mm. have to. Yeah, you have to. It's a lot of people that would come here and or send, you know, via email or whatever, you know, they can they're the mail and um mm-hmm. they can they can cut out all the middlemen and direct work directly with you. But when you go there, especially for the fabric side, there's so many different phases of uh, uh I guess production to get to the finished product. When people say they're the mill, they're not, you know. Um you have to buy the, the yarn, you have to find the weaving factory, the dyeing factory. There's so many things, and they're all separate entities, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you have to go to each one and this is <laughs> who we're working with. Okay. And uh yeah, it took a while to le- learn and understand um what it was all about. Because um yeah, when I first started with in the very beginning, it was a kind of different supply chain, you know, where the big manufacturers had to work through a converter and they had, and then they had uh, territorial distribution rights to, you know, different people. Wow. Um, and then you, they sold it to a wholesaler and then we bought it. And yeah, it was just so many layers of, uh, I guess, supply, the supply uh-huh. chain. It was, it, was, it was different. Uh, but, so now know, it's just direct, direct from the manufacturer. Yeah. And, but the, I think the big box stores are the ones that kind of changed that whole hmm. line you know because all the national people just went to home depot you know they supplied home depot so all the little guys had to go and find their own sources and i think in the, in the end it worked out you know so we're working with smaller companies and if we want changes they'll adapt and they, they can make the change whereas before it was like this is what we have that's what you sell <laughs> you know so uh, it, it, it worked out stressful at the time but it, it all works out yeah. That is amazing. What was um what has been your biggest hurdle so far in running the business? The biggest hurdle I think the biggest hurdle in the beginning was actually uh finding the courage. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do. And you know, when you first start out, even if we took over from a larger company, you know, they had mm-hmm. to you know, financially, then you're on the hook. Uh, mm-hmm. Financially, too. you know, you have to put your personal guarantees on, on you know, lines of credit and those kind of things. So, it, and I think it, you know, when you're young, you're not too afraid of those issues. You have time, you can work it out. Uh, now, I want zero debt. I don't want to talk to any bankers. <laughs> you know? And, you know, the customers are more familiar with who you are, they trust you. Mm. Uh, yeah once you're more established you know deposits you know it's we're not trying to make money but everything we order for you is custom and you Mm -hmm. know our our supplies want their money so you know we ask for the deposit from here we give it to them and you pay us when we're done Uh, but um, yeah in the beginning it's like no (laughs) yeah you you put that money (laughs) up so yeah i mean that was in the beginning that was the biggest hurdle now is finding the next generation to say Hey, you got a good thing going, and I believe in it too, and I think I can, you know, sustain it. And uh, mm. that's going to be the biggest part of for us. How you continue this stuff? I feel like that's been challenging. Like, I mean, some of it's been the pandemic, but I've seen like these family-run companies just kind of close down, and they've been running for years and years. And it's like yeah. the next generation just didn't want to, didn't want to yeah. do it, or they couldn't find anybody. It's so sad. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so much more difficult to retain people, you know. Uh, mm. And it's so easy, you know, just on the internet now, you can go anywhere and, you know, find better opportunities. And, mm. I don't know. But, that's true. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the biggest challenge is it's going to find people to, it's um, people. yeah, to, to look for that, uh, I, I guess, that space for them that, um, makes the most sense you know we're, there's a lot of talented people in hawaii that mm-hmm. want to do crafty things and that's our job to go and find them and you know, say hey 
come here, you know, because we always get <laughs> weird requests and, and that's not my, I don't have that artistic um, mind. So I just throw mm. it up there. We got this, <laughs> figure it out and do it. <laughs> we don't say no, just, we we'll just tell them how much and if they're ready, to, you know. Yeah, yeah, but there are people that, that that's, you know, that's their thing, right? That's what oh, they yeah. like to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So. so it's just finding those people. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. We are going to take a quick break. This okay. is International Hawaii on ThinkTech, and I'm speaking with Mark Miyahara from Creative Combine, and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. This is International Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and today we're talking with Mark Miyahara from Creative Kama'aina, and they do custom window treatment, and I guess other things. Um, we have a question from our viewer, one of our viewers. They're asking, what is the most popular drapery that your customers request? <laughs> uh, the most, I, I would have to say the most popular is the one that are the most budget-friendly. <laughs> and, and that's the most popular and, and that's the one that we really are the market that we really want to try and um, uh, supply and mm -hmm. uh, satisfy um, and it's mostly for like the rental, rental properties we believe drapery mm. are the best window covering um, product uh, um, for um, residential properties because it kind of ticks all the boxes for um, you know, privacy, privacy, noise control, and all these other things that are important for having a window treatment. You know, a lot of people are kind of moving towards those roller shades, but it's more commercial. Mm. They're thinking, you know, oh, it's so beautiful. We can look out during the day and see the view. And uh, they, when they buy it, what they don't realize is that the light source is outside so they can see outside. But at night, the light source is on the inside. <laughs> But you can see it. And people can uh, see so there's all kinds of privacy issues, and so you know, you know, the hospitality industry, you know, almost 80, 90 percent of them use draperies, and it's for a reason because you know it's soft, yeah. it's more elegant, it breaks up the um, the noise in the room. You know, everything is uh, concrete walls, wood flooring, vinyl flooring, and you know, you know mm -hmm. just noise bouncing all over the place. So you know, the, the draperies or the fabric textiles really break up that. Uh, the, the echo, you know. So even like going to oh, that's true. I never thought about that. These yeah. uh, new restaurants are all nice and neat and clean, but you know, yelling at somebody that's sitting three feet across you <laughs> is yeah. not relaxing, you know. Um, and then that's kind of what yeah you know, is missing. They need that softer textile feel that can kind of oh, absorb the sound. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah, really yeah, yeah. Just... yeah. That's why we, we believe that the draperies are, are the best in the treatments. Mm. You know, what's the most popular? Uh, you know, for for that market, the rental market, it's the, the more mm -hmm. economical ones. Uh, for the people that are looking for privacy and they want more sleep, we have blackout fabrics. <laughs> There's all kinds of different things. Yeah, so, Everybody uh, wants more sleep. Yeah. And that's why it's custom drapery. We kind of listen to what the customer needs and then we try to you know, give them uh, a, a solution. Nice. Has the, um... Has the pandemic affected your business at all? Uh, well, yeah, so, did you have to change? Definitely. Uh, well, it's negative and positive. The negative mm -hmm. side, volume drop. We were, you know, doing uh, a couple of hotels, and right in the middle, they just stopped. We haven't resold wow. yet. Um, you know, they need 
personnel to staff the, the hotel while we do our work. And um, so, you know, that that side of it and uh, affected us production wise um, in, in terms of um, the residential and the more individualized uh, consultations, you know, that social distancing. We try to keep our students mm. installers away from um, from others. And it was tough. It, it's, it's still hard, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, on the positive side, it kind of opened our eyes in terms of what we need to do to learn how to engage now in, you know, the social media side or just e-commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, the state, I got to put a plug in for the HDDC company or their mm -hmm. organization, or that agency. They are just wonderful. Uh, but I think, you know, the formats in the um, the, the points they try to help, you know, small businesses like us, mm -hmm. manufacturers are, I don't know, right on point. I, I just um, love the work that they're doing and, uh, yeah, just in terms of helping us uh, learn all the intricacies about how to do things on, on e-commerce and things that I don't even think about, you know, just look at it and wow, <laughs> that is a nice <laughs> type, but I don't understand why, but so, you know, all these little sessions that we get to participate in um it's extremely extremely uh helpful oh great that's yeah. good so did you find that you're getting more online business or <laughs> referrals well, it, it's um unfortunately it's not our our priority um you know my my priority right now is still working with on the hospitality and, and engaging mm -hmm. that side and um continuing mm -hmm. to do we do for uh, you know our, our customer base but we are trying to develop that side and um yeah this mm -hmm. is i don't know about our 15th iteration on the on the website and um <laughs> it, it's kind of cool though you know you just talk to you know, and these go to each session and you listen to the, uh, an ex expert and can you do that for us <laughs> <You> <laughs> and uh it, yeah it's been really good uh, nice. but, uh, yeah, I so you mentioned you have you're launching a new site. Yeah, alohadrapery.com. So, yeah, so alohadrapery.com is our e-commerce platform, and oh, okay. you know, that's, <clears throat> we we changed the name of it because we wanted to. Uh, I see it potentially as something going beyond the shores of Hawaii, you know, and mm. uh, creative Kamaina part would be kind of uh, it wouldn't say what we're doing so we have to include that drapery part of it and, you know we do everything with right. a law so everything is uh it's kind of lining up nicely it's just a matter of finding the right people to fully engage in that and uh um, do their thing because i don't know what they're thinking <laughs> <You know? laughs> i'm a manufacturer i don't know anything about the marketing side of it so but uh yeah Got it. so you that means you're shifting eventually from Creative Kamaina to Aloha Drapery? No, no, no. And then you'll it's shut down to Creative Kamaina? Two uh, facets of the business, you know, one will continue oh, okay. to do that. Oh, okay. The other side will, you know, try to develop this um, um, e-commerce trade. There's there's certain... Oh, got it. <clears throat> you know, the, the drapery business, like I said, is very detail-oriented. So we're trying mm -hmm. to... So that, you know, there, we can kind of whittle down the options and... Um, supply you know 80 percent of the people that are shopping for drapery you know um they just want privacy and mm -hmm. lock up the light and give me the width and height you know and can we serve that market e-commerce through e-commerce probably well, maybe so mm -hmm. you know? but the ones that are want the high end you know really a designer look that we still need to have this personal one-to-one -one kind of <clears throat> interaction so yeah, I see. Market. And that's going to be more serviced by creative. Yeah. Creative yeah. Kamaina. Yeah. So creative will continue to be the service. Oh, okay. Entity. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, it looks like. Got it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what advice would you give to somebody who's looking to purchase a business since you kind of took oh. over a business? Oh, to purchase a what business. What would you, what? What advice would you give, or what you know, lessons? Yeah, lessons learned from your taking over a business. Yeah, 
I, you know, lesson learned is you really have to have a passion for whatever you're going to do. I mean, um, there's mm. just going to be so many roadblocks and there's going to be so many arrows sh- shot at you and, and yeah. a lot of hurdles. And you have to, you know, just accept <laughs> it and address it and move on. You can't, uh, you, you, you can't just, uh, I don't know. Give up. Give you up. Give up. You, can't <laughs> give up. And you can't dwell too long on, on something. You know, especially, I think if you're going to start something, it's got to be really customized. If somebody can duplicate, mm-hmm. duplicate they will, and real quickly. And if you want to be a distributor mm. of a certain thing, somebody will take it away or, you know. So you got to have something that's very, um, uh, to me, customized. And, um, and mm. do it right and satisfy your customer. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's all I can tell you. you know, we've been doing it 21 years and we have had this, everything is 100% guaranteed. You know, if mm. our customers don't like it, we take it back, redo it until wow. it's, you do it wow. correctly, you know. I, and that was mm-hmm. that's the biggest challenge to to engage your uh, employees to think the same way. That mm-hmm. if they're complaining, they'll come and talk to me about it. Just get it done. You know, if they're not happy, <laughs> you're not happy. I'm not happy. And we have three people that can't sleep, so just take care of it. You know? mm. so, wow, that's amazing. And your and your product is hyper customized. <laughs> yeah, for each no, of your customers. Is. Yeah. So, yeah, we try to treat so, it that way. Everyone is highly customized. So, they, you know, people will talk about, you know, oh, how much it costs and it's so expensive. But, you know, you're talking about an investment and this is what you want. Mm-hmm. going to be then mm-hmm. exactly how you want it. And um, yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially for your home. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. La. Lastly, we are going to wrap up, but I have one random question. So what has been your favorite pastime pandemic activity? Pastime, but if, pa- <laughs> pastime pandemic activity. I mean, have you had time or have you just been busy this whole time? <laughs> yeah, I still come, seven days a week I'm here. Yeah. Oh my God. That's only, it's just passion. Yes. It's not work. It's, but it's just mm. enjoy it. Um, and that's what you need, I that's guess. That's good. You're in business now. So yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't watch <laughs> TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will leave it there. And you've been watching International Hawaii on Think Tech today. Today, we've been talking with creative Kamaina and Mark Miyahira. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, Mark. And oh, thank, thank you, you to our viewers for tuning in. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm Cindy Matsuki, and we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of International Hawaii. We'll see you next time. Thanks.